Hi, and welcome back to Edric Poon and Company, the podcast where anybody can inspire everybody. I'm Edric, your host, and joining us this week is really a pleasure for me because he's number one, um, still my boss, <laughs> is Mr. Aloysius Orlando, Chief Executive of SingX, and he's also the president of AIPC and president of SACIOS. So Aloysius and I will be looking into developing your skill set, right, for the, uh, for the C-suite, transitioning from middle management to CEO or CXO, and the beauty of wearing multiple hats in your industry. So let's get this podcast started. Hey, hi, Aloysius. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Hey, it's not often you get to interview your own boss, you know. This is uh, normally (laughs) the other way when it comes to hiring. No, 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 not boss. Uh, These are (laughs) industry colleagues. Oh, really? Really now? Industry colleagues, huh? So, uh, Aloysius, currently you're the CE of SingX and you're also wearing the president hat of two different associations slash organizations slash industry insight specialists, if you wanted to call it that. So, but what's it like? What is really your job scope as CE and the president of two different associations? Well, the mice industry which we are in is something which I hold very dear and I, I see the significant value it brings um, not just to the industry and the economy, it's, it's, it's also to the personal growth and I think also the, the uh, ability that one can really make change and magic happen. I think it's one of the very few industries where you can put and operationalize your creativity and something where you can make Hmm. truly great things happen, whether you're doing an event, whether you're hosting an event, whether you are uh, rubbing shoulders with the who's who in in the global uh, industry, and also gaining inspiration and insights. I think that's something which is truly remarkable. And wearing multiple hats, uh, I, I don't see that as a sort of a job function. I see that as pathways to strengthen uh, my own ability to do better uh, in in the industry uh, which I cherish. Hmm. Okay, I mean, since we're on that topic already, right, maybe let's just go straight into that, really. Um, What in your eyes, you were just mentioning that uh, you were able to network, you were able to rub shoulders and get all the insights, right? But with all the workload and juggling all of this, is that really just the upside to all of that? Ultimately, right, uh, be true. Is this something that can also catapult your career further as well? <laughs> <laughs> I think when we, when we embark on a, on, this, on a journey, whatever that journey you so define, um, certainly it's important to see where you want to go to, what's your destination. But I think we shouldn't be too uh, fixated as to where you want to be. I think you need to also enjoy the ride. And so if there are opportunities presented to you, make full use of it. And it doesn't matter whether or not you are a a CXO, a CEO, a president, or a manager, an executive. I think what I personally believe in is to make sure that you do our level best. And I think you put your heart and your soul into what you're doing because you're going to get lots more out of it. It's not just about monetary terms. It's also about um, bringing meaning to what you're doing. We all have one life. <laughs> mm-hmm. No one has more or a second less, right? So it's important for us to take that perspective and, and give it our best shot. And it's not that easy, actually, because sometimes, um, depending on how one is brought up, the conditions that we are in, the operating environment that we're in, it in a way, um, determines your outlook and your perspective. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where I had the, the benefit. And I think you'll be asking me the next question about my life before corporate world. Um, but I think it's, it's all about um, coming from, maybe it's got to do with um, humble beginnings, um, got to do with how I had seen uh, difficulties, perseverance, grit, even with the simplest of things that, that one has. And I think what's most important is really to help each other uh, make the best 
of, of the situation and more importantly, uh, bring out the best in that person. I think that's something that's going to be truly meaningful. So in this journey of whether you are going to the top or wherever you wherever one is, right, is to give it our best shot. Thanks so much for that, Aloysius. You know, you made up, uh, you made an extremely great point uh, with regards to taking every opportunity and running with it. You know, just throwing caution to the wind and making the best of it. <laughs> and, um, but uh, there's there's also that thing about enjoying it, enjoying the experience along the way. Uh, that's something that I really, really um, uh, definitely can take away from that for sure. You know, and you also mentioned things about uh, rightly put. You already knew that I'm going to ask you. Uh, you know, I I love to dwell. Uh, Oh, sorry, I love to to delve into the past to find out who exactly you are because there are a couple of things that um, even colleagues probably don't know, you know, uh, about you. Yes, you studied, you know, looking at your LinkedIn profile, you know, there's there's so many things, right? But nobody starts out as a uh, manager of regional tourism, you know. So you had to have done something before all of that, you know. Well, uh, in local terms, I'm a kampong boy. <laughs> so, uh I grew up with chickens, chicken farms and, and the like, and I really enjoyed that because uh, nowadays you do not have that opportunity. In fact, it's all quite, mm. quite contrived. <laughs> you go on to Sungai Kadot or you go to the farms, but at least there's something for, for our kids and, and their kids to enjoy. But I think the ruggedness of, of kampong living, and I think because Singapore was also going through its growing pains mm. right in the early 70s, 80s, um, and I think that's that's where I'm not sure what throwing caution to the wind. I, I think we are pragmatic, and yeah. and we we sort of took caution in our stride and and the risk in our stride, and and therefore it's important to to take that perspective. And I I just didn't decide. Okay, do you need to be a doctor or do you need to be a lawyer and all these things? It's very nice to hear. You, you get that pressure here and there, but I think at the end of the day. Uh, I had a supportive family, um, mm. and I think my uh, my mom was, uh, was truly uh, an inspiration. He said, "Do your level best. You know, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to follow anybody. What you do is you you believe in what you do, and I think you you give it your best shot. Because uh, at the end of the day, the journey that we take, the you and I take in our respective journeys, right? Mm. It's something that's going to enrich us, and no one's going to rob that away." But the question is, how do you make make use of that to help others along the way? I think that's the value of being uh, a, a human being, of uh, mm. being a, a responsible member of the global community, a big member of your uh, of your society, and especially if your families, to also be a hopefully a role model for your for your kids uh, to also see that you know it's it's about not just hard work, but it's about good work and about responsible work. Hmm. So what was your first part-time job? I mean, with all of that, just ah. curious. <laughs> uh, one thing which maybe um, many would not know is I tried to apply for a job as a waiter. Really? <laughs> many, 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 many years before school. And guess what? I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> to to which place was that? I Is can't remember. Around? I think it was it was it was some uh, uh, Western restaurant. I think so. I can't remember. Oh my yeah. goodness! Yeah. So it's pretty odd, and I'm I, and I landed myself in in hospitality and <laughs> tourism. <laughs> Dude, the irony but, uh, of it all. The indication. No, but but uh, <laughs> and I I think um, it it there will always be twists and turns, and there will mm. always be um, whether you call it. Uh, disappointments or failures. Right? Failure is quite a strong word, but how you pick yourself up and learn from it. So right. yeah, I said end of the day, fine. Let's go and try others. Then yeah, look into brokerage firms. Say, <laughs> mm. so, yeah, making money is good, but is that all to it? Just making sure numbers are there, and you no, know, you find that it becomes very transactional, and I think it makes you feel cold. Oh, and I felt okay. no, I think not too much. So I said, okay, let's let's do what many many do, which is give tuition. <laughs> you gave so tuition, gave tuition. Well. yeah, give tuition just to get um, get some extra pocket money, right? Uh, and then uh, help me through to my to my university days, mm. uh, and uh, and then um, see what what's out there in the corporate world to, to start off. So it wasn't there that I wanted to be an entrepreneur startup. Uh, I think it's something where you you try different things, 
uh, as you can so that you're able to see whether or not uh, is there a certain uh, a groove that, that you can fall in. How, how did you end up just going straight into uh, STB after that? Well, I applied for it. <laughs> you applied for it and, and all of a sudden you got a manager position. No, I entered, I, uh, the manager was about just a, a year after I, I entered. But before that is, um, I was with the uh, administration. Yeah, I was doing administration. Really? For yes. STB? And, from STB, yeah. So I just do that, and and uh, my curiosity got the better of me. Decided to see what exactly is this all about, and I I learned I learned hard and learned fast. And uh, yeah, I they they felt that maybe you could do something much more than that, and then, and that's where that pretty exciting journey of this regional tourism come in, which was all about uh, expanding um, Singapore's uh, external space, and and that is all about <clears throat> investments, looking at at um, how to work with regional partners to expand uh, what, what is deemed as a, a GNP play, the gross national product play in economic terms. And, and therefore, um, that, that opportunity came about and um, yeah, I decided to just go for it and I got to, to, to travel uh, at the time, but uh, for many of us, it was quite a cool thing to do. Uh, even though it was the regional markets to, to Indonesia and um, Philippines and Thailand and Vietnam. But I think what, what uh, surprised me was the richness and diversity that we are in. And sometimes when I look back and say, wow, I wish I had known much more when I was in school. And we had an opportunity to even have, um, uh, if we had opportunities for exchange programs, or at least to to know much more about history of our region and our geography. Because the region of the peoples, and, and it's amazing, it opens one's eyes to see, imagine the talent and uh, the wisdom and uh, I would say the smarts of people around. What if we can work together to make something great? I think it's really fantastic. So I think that, that journey of uh, the early years of regional tourism really opened my eyes to the power of regional collaboration. I, I think then you fast forward to where I am now, uh, particularly wearing these heads of presidents of a global association, uh, AIPC, which is based in Brussels, and SASIOS being national. It's all about uh, collaboration of, of different scales, but still very important. I think no man is an island. And I think it's we are able to see past um, the borders past our own um, comfort zones, um, you will be amazed with many things that can be done. And in fact, there are many things that bind us together across cultures and borders and countries. The same pain points, the same hopes, aspirations, fears, uh, and it's all about how we deal with it. Uh, and, the, and the cultures that we belong to will, will shape the way that we deal with it. But it's really fundamentally not much of a difference. And that's why the exchange, whether you call it networking or the sharing of experiences are very important mm. because um, you are not alone. And I think that's where, like what we are doing today, it's hopefully in the sharing, uh, it gives one uh, a point of reflection to, to sometimes, as I said, think back and not to be too calculative. Or you want to chart your way. I know some might want to think, oh, this is what I want to do, step one, step two, step three. Sometimes life doesn't work out that way. And you really have to, as I said, enjoy, go for the ride. And, and, and be prepared to get knocks and yeah. bruises. And, and sometimes you saw, right? Mm. But that's all, but that's, that's, that's the journey of life. Oh, sometimes people call it the university of hard knocks. Mm. And, and that's going to be important because that's how you, you either harden yourself up uh, and you can either harden yourself up by being pretty cold pretty calculated, or you can be empathetic, or you can be um, uh, a people-loving person, mm. uh, and anything in between. So it's, it's, it's for you, depending on your personality, depending on your makeup. But I think what's most important is that what I've discovered is you have to be true to yourself. Yep. Um, I think that's, that's going to be very crucial because you cannot, and I don't think so, it's going to be very... Um, I would say meaningful to assume that you are another person. 
um, because that's not who you are. And, and even you fake it, right? You can only do so much, but the truth will, will show itself and mm. the, the, inner, the inner self of you will come out because your subconsciousness is the one that's going to give the way. And so how you deal with people and, and how do you interact and how do you nudge, how do you be firm, when do you be firm and the like, um, it must be a reflection of who you are and the beliefs and the values that you have. Right. Oh, this is very zen. Uh, you, you've always been such a zen person, I have to say. You know, to be honest, I, I've seen you stressed, but I've never seen you like mad, mad. But maybe that's because I'm not in the right meetings uh, you know, to watch the show. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, what you're saying is exactly true. Uh, there's, there's this uh, concept, right, of uh, what David Goggins had said before, um, that he uses this thing called the mirror of accountability, which is basically every day he looks himself in the mirror and says, what have I done today to make myself, that made myself a better version of myself than yesterday? So right. every day right. he does this. And it's very, very true. When you look at yourself in the mirror, you can't fake it. There's no way that you can actually say that, oh, I just did this. And all of a sudden you know that, hey, look, you're lying to even yourself. So that's mm -hmm. the worst thing that can happen because that's just layers of denial and layers of denial that will right. get you nowhere absolutely nowhere so um th with that you know thanks so much for sharing that i would also like to then ask right with through this journey that you've had so far i'm i'm still in middle management you know uh, and i would like to know when you were thrown into the fray what was your first experience of of leading your own team you know and, and having it because for us we're just there, you know, you get the title of manager and all of a sudden you're expected to manage. Nobody teaches you anything. So what was your experience <laughs> like that? Yeah, yeah, you're right, you know. Um, I mean, there are, there are literature and there are reference points and I, I mm. think what I, I sort of sought out to do was also to find um, role models, um, whether it is um, my colleagues, my peers, uh, whether it is my immediate boss or my boss's boss in the journey that I've taken and really to look at what what inspires them right what keeps them going hmm. now it's very hard unless you interact that's one thing but sometimes the power of observation is you, can, you, you should not underestimate it just sit back reflect look at it you see how they conduct meetings <clears throat> how they conduct themselves how they communicate the points um, what does what's their thinking? What's their uh, the, what's their body language? Uh, mm. I think that that part is something which we will pick along the way. Um, and one may ask, oh, should we go and pick up a course for this? <clears throat> yeah, that's why I say it's called the University of Hard Knocks. <laughs> mm, you you, you can learn and you can learn the principles and all that, and that that's something which is which is valuable. Right. But then nothing beats going through um, real life experiences. So whether it's projects and when if you are part of a team or whether you are given the opportunity of leading a team, see what is it that can help the team gel together. And I think what I've learned uh, in pretty early years is it doesn't mean that once you're given a role or a leadership role, whether it's a project lead, right? And whatever you say, people will listen, right? And, and you assume that because I am the boss, right? I say you, you do, right? Um, and sometimes we have all these wonderful words of wisdom where, where a leader, the leader is to lead, it's not to manage. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Uh, it means about how do you inspire people and what's the cause? I think what I've learned early on is what's the purpose? So the purpose is going to be key. And, and the purpose means we have to be aligned to it. So alignment is also very important. So whatever roles you play, it is not because you have an approving authority. That's, a, that's an administration of functional need. Mm. But I think what is most important to make those outcomes um, uh, realized um, is to be clear what's your purpose, how do you bring about and how do you rally the different folks and therefore being aligned. And I think in the course of our, our own uh, sessions, um, I've always mentioned about the need to be be aligned with yourself. The alignment starts with each and every one of us. Because if you can't draw that line of sight or that alignment, it's going to be quite tough because it, then it becomes a job. Yeah. If it becomes a job and if you're not so excited about it, it becomes a chore. 
Yep. And you're going to drag your feet, uh, drag yourself out of bed, you know, and then you lament. And then, and then you find that, why are you wasting your life and you're <laughs> away? Mm. Yeah, it's one day gone and it's gone forever. Uh, therefore, it's important to find that purpose and whatever it is. It doesn't have to be total time, at least 20, 30%, whatever number you want to be. Find that purpose, keep that motivation going. Because as you do that, you, you will be amazed with many other things that you'll learn along the way. So either you observe, you pick up skills, you pick up how people communicate in a different operating context, how the dynamics at play work, how do you work with different folks, and folks for which have different backgrounds and cultures. So I think those are things which will be, will be important to, to look at. So I think it's not just about <clears throat> picking a book, how to lead, how to manage, or what's the difference, going to school or picking up school. Those are important, but I think uh, what's important what's the greatest learning would be to seize the opportunity that's given to you, right? And not see it as a job, see it as a greater purpose. And I think if you give yourself whatever we are doing, give it a, a, a notch or two above what you can do, do a bit more, I think you will be able to learn much more and grow uh, in both your uh, professional and, and personal capacities. Coincidentally, I was just talking about this last night, you know, uh, because I was reading up uh, on on several a uh, bit of information here and there, especially about middle managers, and I realized something. Uh, you're you exactly what you're saying is, uh, it's absolutely spot on, and the biggest reason why uh, a middle managers fail to succeed or fail to progress in the career or find motivation is and their purpose. Right, is also because of what you mentioned is alignment. So the, I would like to also ask a little bit more: Is it more of a self-alignment to the company, or is it, or does it also work because the company's or the organization's uh, uh, goals, vision, and mission doesn't necessarily align with that person's moral compass? Is is both ways? It's both things, isn't it? Well, then that would be called perfect unison. <laughs> of course, I think. You, you start off with what you can manage, you can control, which is yourself. Mm. You need to be clear about what do you want to do. I think you asked the earlier question, what do you set out to do? And for me, I set out to learn and to, to really pick up skills to see how I can make a, a positive difference, a defining difference in the things that I do in the industry that I work in. Now, if that is my, uh, my, my uh, I would say, uh, view of things and whatever I'm put in, right? I need to also connect and it does that purpose or the objectives, our mission, uh, the guiding light, the lighthouse, many terms that you can use, does it resonate with me? Now, what, what if it doesn't? So you have a choice. Do you want to take this and opportunity to see whether can I be flexible and adaptable? Uh, but you must find that 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 uh, objective or that uh, purpose or the mm. overarching purpose that that must there must be elements that resonate with you. It may not be total res resonance, mm -hmm. but I think it has to have that because otherwise you are you are doing it aimlessly. Yeah. So you need to find that find the hook. Mm. Once you get that, see what does it evolve into. Mm. Now it doesn't mean that uh, it is what the job or the role or the the project I'm doing does for me, right? Uh, it, you, one has to take the approach where no one owes you a living. Hmm. You have to make it work for yourself. But in so doing, you can build positive interrelationships and that's for you to decide. Yep. Uh, I think that's where it all stems from you and, um, from you and I. And that's where that personal alignment is very key. I can't take that away from you. I say, like, for you, you mentioned that, you know, you go by servant leadership. That's great. And no one's going to say that's bad or that's good. Mm. That's great. That's something that mm. powers you. Okay, put that into good use. How do you help others also thrive and, and, and go to the best of their ability? So same thing. I think if we take that, I would call this altruistic, but if you take that, that greater goal perspective, I think it's going to be so worthwhile. Um, and I think that that's what what is it's, it's crucial to note. So that that alignment, the purpose, it, and that's how it 
could manifest itself. But don't force it. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, yeah, I will have to try to do and never mind, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do all my level best, even though I don't believe it. You know, it's the the person that's going to feel so disillusioned is yourself. Yes. Yeah, you may get the job done, but you find that was it all worth it? Mm. Right. right. And, and and I think as I said, it goes back to enjoying the journey. Enjoying doesn't mean you're having a short time. But enjoying also means that you are learning, you are growing. Definitely, definitely agree with you on all of this, 100%. <laughs> because I've been looking into this so much because I realize that, that there is actually a term for this issue. It's called the frozen middle. I'm not sure whether you've actually come across this, uh, but I've been discovering a lot, a lot of it. And it's a global issue that I really do think that um, <clears throat> I think that companies in general, right, can really, really help in this area, you know, um, and some of the some of the areas that I, I was discovering since we're on this topic was that companies can actually work with HR and, and, and or at least get the HR to also get to know that people a lot better in that sense. Unfortunately, for larger companies, it's very difficult. But once we're able to do that, we can then uh, start developing uh, uh, more customized programs to look into their career paths. Because currently, a lot of the time, you know, we're all busy with our things, but we can also provide the courses. But there's nobody to say, I think this course is really good for you. I think this course is really useful for you. You know, to bring that down to that individual level, I think it really shows a great deal of investment, not monetary, but emotional investment and connection with the staff. And that really will help them in terms of their motivation, their um, not yeah. so much the purpose, but the motivation to allow them to feel connected with the company and I think overall talent pool and loyalty retention will really increase if a simple step like that, right, is actually done. So town halls that you've run, you know, being connected to people, trying to get to know, I, I think these are great steps that uh, that you do to to connect with all of these people, you know, especially for people like myself, giving us a chance to yeah. speak with you on such a <clears throat> candid level. <laughs> yeah, but but sometimes I, I look at it and say it's, it's not enough. I, I wish mm. I could do much, much more. And you're right. Um, it's about having the opportunity to interact. And I think during the during last year and in 2020, 2020 was such a tough year for all of us. I think the sessions where we was trying to, to think about how do we how do we become uh, how do we help each other through these very difficult and unprecedented times. Um, and I think that's where I thought of having huddle sessions. Uh, and I can imagine uh, sometimes people say, oh, no, the boss is going to have a session with me and there's no agenda. What should I say? Should I do a PowerPoint presentation and things like that? I, th I think sometimes we, we, we stress ourselves silly, right? And, and just talk about and be true to yourself because at the end of the day, um, whether it's a leader or your colleague, right, they know you're, you're speaking from, from the heart as what you are doing. And, and therefore, it's important and it, it will feed off. I think if you're sincere about what you want to get out of it, and, and in these sessions, like the huddle sessions that I sort of had, um, there is, I, can, I can sense the, tense, the tension because people thought, okay, what should I be saying? <laughs> but sometimes I say, no, just what exactly you're going through. Right? And I think one needs to bear in mind that whether there's a leader or a boss or however you call the person, right? he or she is a human being he or she actually uh, has feelings <laughs> and they care so <laughs> so it's not about hiding behind a certain persona uh, but actually and 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 that's why that framing and no matter how you label it right you will always have that fear hmm. uh, and, and and rightly so but i think don't let it get the the better hold of you but what's important is really to you know, say you're not going to be demeaning the whole idea here is you're going to say what it is, what concerns you, um, and how do you communicate? So com this is all the basics of communication. It's what you're alluding to. And even if you have someone has gone through a set of programs, uh, um, certain workshops, uh, and that's why we have sometimes sharing sessions. What have you learned? Right? It's not to say that, wow, have you been a good student? Did you ace the paper? <laughs> no, it's not. What did you learn? And what is it that perhaps others can benefit from it? Perhaps say, yeah, I, I should go for it. And I never knew that 
uh, that uh, that particular program or the workshop actually cover these areas. So I think that that sharing is, is always going to be key. I think what's really important as we journey through this um, um, post-COVID era where things continue to evolve and many things still remain uncertain, right, is to how do we uh, give each other a nudge and help each other and how do we get coached? How do we help to mentor? How do we be a friend at certain times? Now, it doesn't mean that we're all pally pally. There's time and place for different roles. But I think one needs to be clear, how do we um, develop that agility right, to know, okay, do you know yourself better? How do you make it work? And I think knowing yourself better means you are good in certain things and you are good in and not so good in other things. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You don't have to be apologetic about it. Be, be clear of what you are good at and do your level best. For those that you are not, sorry, I for one, I, I, I mean, accountants, accountancy and numbers and all that, right? You think I, I will have to learn that, but we've got our CFOs and all that to handle, but we've got experts. But it doesn't mean that you have to be to the level of expert. Mm -hmm. You need to know it so that you get a better sense and you and you know an appreciation of how the different parts work. But you are you must be you must sharpen your ability in which you are good at. Find that goodness and find that skill set, that capability that edge. Because at one, if you put in a, a unit of of effort in strengthening your edge, your return is so much greater than a unit of effort in an area which you're not so good at. Right? Because if you put in so you learn so mm. much, you only get that little. It's because of your disposition or maybe your inclination or how you're making we are all different so find that find that uh, source of growth for yourself and do your level best it doesn't mean the rest are not important but get an understanding so that you can see how do you work together remember i go back to my earlier point about the power of collaboration hmm. collaboration is not amongst ourselves it's also across the world right so if you know yourself well you know what you can contribute you will know who and when to activate people to help strengthen the collective uh, uh, good that can become that can come about as a result of this collaboration. All right. So this is exactly why you're a CEO, lah. I have to say, lah. <laughs> this is exactly why you're. Uh, okay. Because I don't know. I don't honestly, know whether, whether I, like, I for me, to go my with... peers, regular people like us, nah, we we don't really think that way. But this is hey, a great. It's very, very regular. I, it's very. It's a regular for you. Thing. I, no, it's not. It's not. It's not something like wow. Well, because a CEO, I have to think of it that way. No. You, you can do that to Edric uh, because in whatever you're doing, you're doing this, this podcast, right? You are, <clears throat> it's becoming a window for people. You're connecting people uh, as your tagline goes. Any Anyone from can be something that can be an inspiration to everyone. Mm. And yeah, and, and that's that. You can articulate, you can, you can spar with people, right? Make people at ease, have conversations. That's value. So it doesn't have to mean, wow, it must be big and bold and beautiful. You know, small things matter. We have to bear in mind, Singapore is very small, you know. <laughs> small things matter. That's what my wife said to me. Anyway, so... <laughs> So, anyway, yeah. <laughs> so I also wanted to ask you, right? Like, I mean, you've got so much wisdom to share. Thank you so much for that, right? And something I've always wanted as a middle manager, how would I know whether or not it's time to move up? So in your line, how did you know that you were ready to really take on a, a C role? Wow, I don't know. I didn't know. Uh, you, so so somebody was... just like dropped it on you and said, hey, let's just go and do this. I'm like, what? Uh, in a way, in different, in different stages in life, right? <laughs> uh, it's, because you do what you believe in and you give your, your, your utmost best, right? Maybe people will say that maybe you can do other things. And sometimes say, yeah, why not? Let me give it a shot. What is the worst thing that can happen? Yeah, you fail. Maybe mm -hmm. you didn't do that. But you know what? You will come out much, much richer. So the idea here is not, well, I'm going to do that and I'm going to be a, a CEO or a chairman and I'm going to, yes, I've, I've arrived. Then I think it's going to be a very tough journey because there's so much more pressure that you have put on yourself. Mm. And, and, and you, the idea about enjoying the, the ride means you must have both that 
uh, that ums to do things, but you must also have that uh, wellness and health. Yeah. And and really, as you get more and more things, and as the environment gets more and more tough, right? Mm. The the mental health is going to be very key. That's a silent killer. Mm. And I think that's something where um, you must give it a shot. And if the opportunity presents itself, seize it. That's why the the um, you have this question here. How do I know I'm ready to take on a CXO? Act? I think it goes back to what my principle in life is. It's, it's very simple. It's carpe diem. Seize the day. Whatever it is, because there's only the, the, the time and the minutes are taking away, right? You can't get that back. So you want to make sure that either you can share something as what we're doing today, and in our interactions, I learned something about it, and through the reflections, right? You, the journey will come. Now, if you are so determined to say, yes, I want to be a, a CXO, so be it. That's great. That's your purpose. You strive. But be prepared. You know, life is not going to be a straight road. There will be twists and turns, curves and bends. So the question is, how do you take to it? I think the, the whole purpose at the end of the day, whatever leadership, whether it's middle management, saying, so there will be success and failures. Hmm. How do you take to it? And, um, and it's also an important point to note, which is, when you are a leader, right, it's also important to start, if, when you start, when you are given an opportunity to be a leader or a manager or a project lead or whatever the title is, you have to start thinking who is your successor. For a very simple reason, you know, we, we only have that life. So you want to give it your the best that you can in that, in that tenure, if you will. And then we take a step back. We follow, if, as you can imagine, uh, when you have a flock of birds going, and seagulls in, in B shape, they take turns to lead, right? It's the same thing, actually. Uh, and, and that's human nature because we will take different learnings along the way, wherever we are. So there must be opportunities for that. It's not about I'm going to hog that position until mm. until death do a spot. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to be very, uh, it's going to be very unfortunate. And I think it's, it's not going to be wise because you are actually in the process, you're going to have atrophy in the organization because your, your, your mindset will be sort of dated. So you have to keep that going. And I think that that's something that uh, sees the opportunity when it's presented itself. You can chart it, right? But when you, if you can do so, be prepared and whatever comes your way. And also when you are at that position, think about who is going to succeed you so that you can keep um, the vibrancy and the energy going. And, and it doesn't mean that you have failed or not. It's just part and parcel of growth and evolution uh, and that you will move on to a different different uh, area of responsibility or a different sort of uh, venture. Right. That, it's very, very uh, amazing that, you know, from the moment that you're already taking it on, you're, you've already got an idea, it seems to me, or at least this is the, paint, uh, the picture that I've painted in my head, that you already know exactly well, not exactly, but you've got a feel you know, of what needs to be done and also the kind of mold right, that you see in the future. And you're already thinking about the next person who is able to carry this on and evolve it further. Is that what, the you know, in a nutshell, what that means? Yeah, I think it has to be. Because you're going to go, you're going to go through your own journey in that time period. Mm -hmm. You're going to make the best out of it. But I think it goes back to my point. How can I make that positive difference? I... It's not about being selfish, right? This is not, oh, I'm, I'm there. And it's about how do you build upon the, the efforts and the growth that, that you, you've put in? Uh, and I think that's, that's the journey of life. Right? You can't possibly be in that leadership position forever. That, that's not, not possible. But I think what's important is how do you prepare it for, for next round? Um, and I think as we can see, in, uh, whether it, if it's in the political situation or whether it's in companies or whether it's in society, right? Um, or even in families, right? <laughs> you have the, the grand old dame and then after that you pass a mm. succession or even in royalty. So there will always be yeah. uh, succession planning as they call it. So I think that's important to always plan for the growth because you want to make sure that you give it your best shot in your period and then you move on to different things. So, and I think 
there will be a lot more opportunities for everybody. It's just whether you want to see it and whether you want to seize it. Hmm. So I think that's that's something. Uh, sometimes we blind ourselves to it because we are so fixated with what we are so used to. Mm. And that's the greatest, I would say, constraint for each of us, the whole notion of comfort zone. And we are, because we, have, we know what is that, and and it's very human nature, right, You to get out of your comfort zone, right? It's, it's a bit mm. tough and, and that, but, uh, and that, that's where I think it's the greatest learning. Yeah, mm. so I, I think that, if anything, is to ensure that um, um, seize the day, take the opportunity that comes before you uh, and really give it your best shot. Well, that already covered the next question I wanted to ask, which was what your key values were. And that's exactly oh. it. It's carpe diem, <laughs> you know, seize the day, uh, enjoy the ride uh, and and yeah, just do your best. Yeah. <laughs> it seems to be yeah. the thing. Those those are the three things that you, you've always mentioned throughout the entire podcast so far. And thank you so much for okay. that. You know, um, the next thing I also wanted to ask, right, is that we went through the COVID-19 situation. 2020, as what you mentioned, was extremely rough, right? Um, but everybody was scrambling, hoping to hold their own jobs. You were, uh, you know, instrumental in making sure that there are zero, pretty much like uh, 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 the least layoffs, or in fact, zero layoffs, if not wrong. Uh, but what were the pressures on you and what was the biggest challenge as CEO that all of us didn't get to see. I mean, of course, you don't have to tell us whether you were crying in the toilet or anything like that. <laughs> but, you know, you were no, sporting the beard. Your wow, your eyes were just like you know the dark circles were heavy at the time. <laughs> so, what was really the biggest challenge for you on on you really? Uh, wow, thank you for ob- thank you for observing my my beard and my <laughs> dark circles. <laughs> uh, well, I worry about the staff. As in S T A F F. I worry about their jobs and their families mm. and how do we take them through. That was the greatest worry. Mm. And that's the thing. With so much uncertainty, every day, right, seemed, I mean, I would think that it's really a hellish process because honestly speaking, right, these are things that keep me up at night. You know, how do I put food on the table for my family? What if it, if, if it does happen, I better have a contingency plan. <laughs> I better know how to do this. I better know how to do that. You know, like uh, become an electrician or a plumber or something. Got to do something, right? Um, how do you handle this pressure? Because do you have so many decisions to make? I still wonder whether you even sleep at night, which I don't think you do. Well, I do. I do. I, I cherish my two, three hours sleep. <laughs> but uh, what? Two, three hours uh, of sleep? No, no, You're not a every machine, day. man. <clears throat> um, no, 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 no. I, I, I sometimes have my, my indulgences. <laughs> have six hours of sleep. <laughs> uh, I think uh, 20, 20, the COVID time, uh, we are still, of course, in COVID, but then mm. first year, 2020, there's a lot of uncertainty, right? And naturally, the uncertainty will be how do we survive uh, as a company, as a business? Because how do we make sure jobs continue to be there? And because there are mouths to feed, uh, there's also um, uh, teams who are depending on the decisions one make. So clearly the pressures add up. At the same time, we also have to think about um, what the society is going through, right? And then we see all the number of cases and, and we see that it is not just us as a company, it's a small company overall scheme of things, but also in government agencies, uh, in shareholders, in different sister companies, all are grappling with it. So for the first time in history, right, we are all in this together. But I think what brought us together is that we are, again, goes back to the purpose and the focus that we need to get ourselves out of this uh, because otherwise you know, there's no recovery, let alone thriving. And that would mean working together with um, different people. And, and that's what we did. Uh, we, we were part of the community care facility, the first pivot. Uh, and then we would say that, okay, this is this is good. We, I was I was thinking, okay, how do I re, reinvigorate the business? And we knew the whole notion of what digitalizing, hybrid, and all these things. And so I said that whatever it is, it's very important that um, that our colleagues pick up new skills. That's why we, uh, we've all gone through this whole thing and you, you are familiar with this thing called the donuts as they affectionately call. 
everybody gets put in together and everybody's grappling, what the hell am I going to do with this? But we do know something. I say the whole notion is to learn from each other, is to help break our own walls, is to use this opportunity to pick up new skills. And I, I'm, I'm very appreciative and thankful to, to the team because uh, they, they rose to the occasion. They learn as much as they can. And I think they are now experts in becoming broadcasters. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, they can give Media Corp a run for its money. Uh, career, so it's man. great. Yeah. And even for yourself, you know, how you handle the how you handle the the very tough participants and clients to our FinTech Festival and many <laughs> others. It, it will build that up. I think these are all skills, soft skills, hard skills are very necessary. And and then mm. that's something we find that if anything goes wrong, I mean we can do our level best. If something really goes awry, at least uh, I, I take comfort that there are new skills that people have learned and hopefully right. we, can, we can stand it in good stead. So I think that's the whole notion. How do I handle all this pressure? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I think I have to give credit to my wife and my family. You've been married how long? <laughs> I better remember this uh, close to about 20 over years. 20 over years. Okay, that's a good generic answer. That's fine. You're safe. <laughs> safe. It's fine. Don't worry. Yeah. Then, so I think yeah. the family, it's it's important so that I can have uh can focus on on managing um uh my extended family here. Yeah? Mm. Uh and also to to look at and how to really balance it out. Now having said time, I think that's one thing which I did not really mention. It's also important to spend time with your family. Yeah. And that's very crucial and uh and appreciate that um little time little things matter and uh so i always love to go out with uh, date nights with my daughter so that's 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 fun uh and and my runs with my son so i think that's how we we, we look at, at managing pressure uh, i think it's it's you you don't manage pressure yourself right you mm -hmm. manage pressure and you do so with your loved ones and i think that it gives you a whole lot of um, I would say inspiration and and a sense of perspective. The pressure is not as overwhelming as one might think, because at the end of the day, it's who do you cherish and what do you do, and you bring that that sort of trait and that value into the way that you do your into the, do your work in terms of doing how you handle all these uh, evolving and uncertain situations. Mm. And at the end of the day, I mean that's great because it kind of brought up another point whereby um, about the purpose you know uh, many a times when we face pressurizing situations it's fight or flight to some extent and then at the end of the day you wonder is it worth it if it's not worth it naturally you mm -hmm. just want to dump it right you just don't want to do it anymore but in the case of making sure that you're aligned and this is what you want to do somehow or other you're able to you're still motivated to keep going and say that it's worth it it's going to do it and this is why I guess you're able to also spread that out, you know, across uh, families. Oh, well, this sounds very strange, but yes, uh, both your families. <laughs> I hope your, so. <laughs> yeah, your extended yeah. family. That's right. <laughs> Thanks. And and you also mentioning earlier on that you do uh, runs with your son at this time. Uh, so, mm -hmm. what is a uh, your your ideal? health and fitness and nutrition routine because you did uh, I, I remember we were talking this was many years ago well several years ago not many but several years ago you did mention to me about uh, a certain diet which was um a breakfast like uh, of a king and uh what, what, what was that you said that you ate breakfast like a oh, king, king and, prince popper yeah yeah that's right that's right breakfast <laughs> like a king uh lunch like uh, a yeah. prince and uh, dinner like a popper right yeah so, so well, that's generally like this, yeah. But I still have my occasional indulgence of my s of my desserts, which I, I <laughs> I'm a you sweet have tooth. no vice. Come on, yeah, sweet tooth. You... What uh, having desserts? <laughs> uh, I don't well. smoke, unfortunately. <laughs> well, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. So uh, it's a good thing. Um, yeah, I think health and fitness is is very key. Um, so I, I do my my runs. Um, uh, I don't I don't go for marathons. I, I think it would be a super stress on my knees, but uh, mm. I don't do that. I'm not really a runner, but I do at least about three, four, five clicks uh, a, a day. For about, so about 20 clicks a week. Mm. Yeah. So I love to run uh, in the morning and sometimes if I can't, uh, I'll do brisk walking uh, and then if not, I'll, I'll, I'll go um, 
jogging with my wife. Yeah. Are there mornings that you go, ah, I just don't want to run? Or do yeah, you actually have, yeah, then do you, do oh, you, how do you get yourself to do it? Oh, that's tough. Yeah. I mean, I'm human too, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes people say, yeah, I'm going to run every day. But there would be times where your body will say, can we just cut it? Can we just sleep in, please? Mm. <laughs> so listen to your body. Right. Because sometimes if you, pre if you push yourself too hard, actually it becomes unhealthy. Uh, you create, you may have uh, other ailments coming along the way. So your, your body is your best machine. You, you, you listen to it. Um, and, and I think sometimes you get, uh, you get into the mood of it, but you also mm. need to have some discipline. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, and this is, this is a tough call. Is it laziness <laughs> or is it your body needs a rest? Right. So I think the discipline is that you keep yourself going to say, whatever it takes, I need to do four times weekly. Okay. Then keep it that way. So at, at least, uh, have that, have that, um, self-motivation in you but don't overdo it yeah mm, so right so you still stick to the whole food group kind of nutrition as what we've been taught <laughs> way back then or is there a specific uh, I, kind of a, a diet that you're sticking to uh no 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 i i have my i have less carbo nowadays uh, but more vegetables um, white meat yeah and sometimes i have some um, wholemeal bread uh things like that Oh, still very healthy. And of course, which is uh, no, no, no. I, and I do have my I have my tree kueh and my sun kueh and my jaya kueh. Yeah. Oh, okay, la, okay, la. Balance is out, la. Balance. Out. That's, that's what you call a balanced diet. A balance between healthy and unhealthy food. That's right. Net, net. Yeah, I will I neutralize it by my 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 uh, exercises. Yeah. Correct. I exercise so I can eat. It's not the other way around. Yeah. That's the thing. Is you you live to eat or you eat to yeah. live. <laughs> right, right, right. I have to. I have to. Like, if I know in the morning, right? Let's say, for example, this morning I didn't exercise, but I'll be, I'll be doing it later. Um, if I don't exercise that day, I know that I, I just won't feel comfortable eating the meal, or, or I know that if I got a big meal that day, man, I'm gonna put in those extra. I'm gonna burn those extra calories to make space. It's like you gotta yeah. clear your fridge out before you can bring in new yeah. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way I, 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 do, I do that too. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's actually a lot healthier for me, at least mentally, because then I know that I'm not uh, I'm not killing myself over this, but I've really got, again, purpose, purpose. The purpose is to make space for other things so that you don't gain the weight and, you know, you, you don't lug around all the extra kilos. That's true. That's uh, one of the greatest things. And one, one thing I also would like to ask you, right? I know this one is out of the blue, okay? Um, but I've been meaning to ask you this for the last five years already. What are you, uh, like... Are you, uh, everybody doesn't know the name Arlando, where does it come from? <laughs> what is the, what? What are you? I'm a yeah, human what being. are you? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm actually of um, four, four different uh, races. So it's Indian, uh, Portuguese, uh, Chinese, or uh, uh, Teochew, and um, Peranakan. Okay, wow. Okay, well, okay. Uh, for whoever is listening and whoever knows Aloysius, the mystery has been solved. You heard it here on the Epic Podcast. Now, moving on to the regular programming, um, is there any advice, sage advice, that you can provide professionals seeking to become the next CXO? As I, I mentioned uh, throughout the, the past hour, so it's um, be true to yourself. Uh, give off your give off your best in whatever is presented to you. Um, it is good to chart where you want to be, but don't get too obsessed with it. Uh, take the different uh, exposures, projects, experiences uh, in your stride develop and go right that, that journey and enjoy yourself because you never know what the next big thing might be um, and especially in today's world right, with the evolving situation and a lot of disruptions and some even say industry reset right it's for us to to keep our senses open um, give and really seize those opportunities i think the final point must be really have a positive have a growth mindset mm. I, I think that at the end of the day that mindset is going to be key 
Um, and it is perfectly all right to get out of your comfort zones, you know, and try something different, right? Always try, get an opportunity to try something different because as you learn, you'll, you will be, I think you will find, you will amaze yourself with things that you never knew you could do. All right, and thank you very, very much, Aloysius. Now, um, <clears throat> we're going to move on to the next segment, all right, uh, which is actually the last thing that I always do with all my guests, which is basically a very quick fire, rapid fire session of 10 questions, all right? It's known as the epic questionnaire. Um, and so you just do your best, as you always do, do your level best, and give me the first answer that comes to your mind. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen uh, of the epic questionnaire with Mr. Aloysius Arlando. Aloysius, are you ready? Fire away. <laughs> okay. Now, epic questionnaire. Question number one. One word that you love the most? Integrity. One word that you dislike the most? This is, oh. I wouldn't say a word. I would say this is what I, I used to do. If you could have a conversation with one person, dead or alive, fictional or non-fictional, who would that be? Lee Kuan Yew. Oh. What do you say to yourself in the mirror every morning? My mantra, seize the day. Seize the day. Name one superpower that you'd like to have. Wisdom. That's, that is a superpower in itself. The, the know-all, see-all. Uh, uh, the ability to see the future, would that be it? To know what would be the best out of the situation you're in. Ah, okay. Favorite dish to eat? Fried carrot cake. Oof. Favorite <laughs> travel spot or the next travel spot you'd like to go to once borders open up? Zermatt. With your family, of course. Zermatt. Sorry? Zermatt in Switzerland. Zermatt. Where is that? Where the Matterhorn is, the the mountain. Yeah. Ooh, wonderful! Something in the arts that you've always wanted to do, but yet to do so. Dance. Dance. What kind? <laughs> uh, funky pop. Ooh, okay, Expressive. so uh, yeah. all right, Mrs. Orlando, you you heard it for yourself if you're listening. All right, take him to dance class. All right, and what does retirement look like to you? <laughs> um, op opportunities to share my learnings and to keep on learning. And how do you want to be remembered? What's your legacy? Ooh. He was a cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that works. All right, me. ladies and gentlemen, that was the epic questionnaire with Mr. Aloysius Alando. Thank you so much, Aloysius, for uh, joining us this week on the podcast. Now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, we are available on YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple Apple and Google Podcasts. Uh, do like, comment, subscribe, do whatever it is you need to do on the internet. Also, look up Aloysius only on uh, LinkedIn because, oh, lo and behold, he has no social media. So look him up on LinkedIn if you want to find out more about him. Again, thank you so much for watching. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks, Edric. Thank you. Thank you.